Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to look at some uh, common WP query performance gotchas uh, or optimizations as well. Um, it's fairly typical in you know, a lot of code that we write, we're using very heavy, heavy usage of WP query. Uh, typically with a complex site, we have a lot of post types, a lot of posts got a lot of data in those post types. You're wanting to slice that data many different ways, show it in different places, etc. Uh, the performance of WP query is, um, let's say, inconsistent depending on what you do with it. Um, so I'm just going to run few, through a few um, common kind of uh, gotchas and pitfalls that, that I see when I'm doing code reviews. Um, so the first one is I'm fetching three of my latest posts and then I'm iterating over them, outputting the title for each one, fairly typical. Uh, now by default with WP Query, it will include or calculate, let's say, the total amount of found items. And obviously my SQL under the hood uh, needs to do a fair amount of things as well to calculate what that total is versus you know, stopping when it has the first three, for example. Um, so in those situations, uh, WP Query has a little um, flag that you can set called no found rows. If you pass that, you will not have the max num pages or pagination information available in the WP Query. If you don't need it, you should always do that. It's gonna make the query faster. Um, and it's just a, a kind of like small useful optimization. Again, the slower the query is, the bigger impact that's gonna have ultimately. Uh, so if you don't need to know, do you have more posts than you're actually asking for, then always use that. Second small optimization there is, uh, is around what information you're asking WP Query to pull for you. In some cases, this isn't mega common, but, but it does happen, uh, fetching the latest 100 movies, let's say, iterating over those and getting a cache value for each one and then putting that into the array, for example. Now in this case, I don't actually need the whole post, WP post object when I do that. Um, so in those cases, you can pass fields, IDs to only select the IDs. So in WP Query by default, it will you know, find all the posts based off the criteria that you've specified. It'll pull the IDs for those posts. And then for each ID that it has, it will check the cache to see if it can get the full post object from the cache. And then all the ones that are left over that weren't in the cache, it will then go and fetch from the database again and pull all of that information, bring it back, put it in the cache, return to your query. It may be that you don't need the whole WP post data. You don't need the title, the content, blah, 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 blah. In those situations, you can pass field IDs and just fetch the IDs. And then when you're iterating the post array, you're actually just iterating the ID uh, integer, and then you can access that. So it's quite a lot faster. It's, uh, it's, it's more lightweight, less data over the wire, less back and forth with the cache, and potentially less back and forth with MySQL as well. Okay, the next optimization I have is around the use of meta queries and keys and values. Um, as you may know, doing a meta query in WP Query when you're value, uh, querying based off of a value, it's a very slow thing to do. Uh, the meta value column is not indexed in WordPress and it's not unusual to have several million rows in your meta table. So trying to look anything up by value can take you know, multiple seconds um, to, to do that query. In these kind of situations, um, there are things that you can do. One of those techniques uh, I've kind of coined as, um, I call it meta key value stuffing, let's say. So it's basically where you put the, um, the meta value as part of the meta key. So then you can do a very fast look up on that because the meta key column in WordPress is indexed. So if you have your information as part of the meta key, you can look that up relatively quickly. Again, this shouldn't be like overused and you should only do this really when your finite amount of meta keys is still relatively small. Otherwise, ultimately it's, it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference. However, let's say instead of doing a, um, I know I want to get all of the movies that have star rating of five, um, I could instead say get everything with a meta key that is star five and the compare is exists. Again, that's gonna be a very fast lookup because um, the meta key value, uh, sorry, meta key column is part of the MySQL index. Now, obviously when I give my, you know, when I'm rating the movies and it's gonna be given its value of stars or, or what have you, um, I need to make sure that I'm actually setting that meta key. So for example, that may look uh, something like um, setting that and then the value doesn't really matter, just set it to one or something. Obviously I would need to also delete all of the other possible values. So this should, you know, really be used when if you, if you have a, a known um, set that can be the meta value, uh, so in this case, I know that it's one through five, so I can you know clean it up accordingly. Um, or uh, other situations, you know, when it comes to deleting it, you would need to do like a like query um, for the meta key. So there's, there's a little bit more um, uh, work to do to make this function correctly, um, but this will allow you to look up um, meta value like things are when you really otherwise shouldn't. Typically in WordPress, when you're selecting data from your post table, you should only do it if it is based off of, um, you know, stuff that is in the post table that is indexed. That's the only things that you should be querying by, or you should only be querying by meta keys in the meta table. Uh, or anything else, you should be using terms and taxonomies to associate data rather than the meta key. I've not, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of cases where maybe you have like an extra flag of like, um, 
is premium content one or zero? And then in every query around the site, you also need to make sure that it adds the is premium content one or zero uh, meta key and meta value lookup. Instead of doing that, make sure, like switch that to an exists. If it has the premium meta key, it means that it's premium content. If it doesn't have the meta key, it means that it's not pre premium. Doing an exists lookup is orders of magnitude faster than doing a value lookup. So if you ever find yourself doing a Boolean that's being stored in meta, you shouldn't do that. You should uh, take the fact that it does exist to be you know positive case and the fact that it doesn't exist to be negative case and then build your logic around that. Final case I want to look at is around the use of dates. So this can apply to other values as well. Um, so here I'm doing a get recent movies and I'm saying anything after two days ago. Now, WP query is very smart. I think it's actually apologies needs to be in a uh, date query. Um, I can say anything that is after two days ago and it will work that out for me automatically. However, you should note that internally what this is going to do is use the uh, the function string to time to take that two days ago and give me a exact timestamp because of that. Every different second that this query runs, I'm going to get a separate uh, value out of that because two days ago is always the current point in time, the current second in time, minus two days. So if I run that query one second later, I'm, I'm generating a different MySQL query. What that means is things like your MySQL query cache or even other caches uh, will not be effective because the value is changing every single second. Um, so for example, a way to avoid that would be say two days ago at midnight. For example, if, if you said that, uh, then that value for the whole of today, that value is not going to change. So in the two days ago, right, when it gets to three days ago, that, that value would change. Um, so be very careful of doing relative time offsets to the current time to now. Uh, there is also a MySQL function called now. If you need to do things based off of now, use the MySQL function now in your query. Um, otherwise, you are going to be changing values in the cache key every second. And ultimately, um, having your cache key have a a high cardinality, which is to say that anything that's part of the cache key that can change to many, many different values is going to make your cache much, much less effective. Um, so that's a, I'd, I'd say not a super common one, but it does happen around post types with custom dates and uh, you know, events, start and end dates and things like that, that you should be careful with relative dates at the, at the per second level, because those values are going to be changing potentially unnecessary all the time. So that's what I've got to show on the, um, performance and gotchas. Again, the point isn't necessarily to be completely exhaustive. It's more to give you like a taste of what an optimization looks like or what slow code looks like. Um, I'd say over time, you kind of develop a sense of things that are um, you know, likely to be slow. If you are seeing room for optimization, it's quite possible that that code has just not been optimized yet. So uh, expect other things as well. And again, if you do see the things that I th I'd say are fairly um, Ed, let, let's say like advanced techniques around making sure all of these specific flags are accounted for and set. It also kind of gives you a good uh, idea that, that the code that you're like reviewing or, or using is, is also well optimized, which is always a good sign.